So uh, good afternoon, guys. I'm Alex, uh, and as Sam said, we are going to discuss today about tracking. Um, a little uh, some words about me and uh, Stefano. Uh, so I'm uh, with uh, Bournemouth University. I'm a lecturer there, and I'm actually leading the uh, forensic computing and security undergraduate degree. I have a PhD in cybersecurity. Uh, from uh, AUEB, this is the Athens University of Economics and Business. Uh, I'm also a student of Fred Piper. I had my uh, MSc from uh, Royal Holloway. And in the past, I uh, worked as a security consultant uh, for a PKI vendor. Um, I was very happy to uh, supervise Stefano uh, while he was doing his uh, MSc in, in uh, Software Engineering and Internet Architecture. Uh, Stefano is the technical lead in uh, BBC, so the, 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 you know, he's managing the, the team that is preparing the front end for BBC uh, in multiple uh, uh, languages. Um, unfortunately, he cannot be with us uh, today. He's off sick, as I know. Uh, Stefano, if you see us from YouTube, hello. Uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, now. I don't think that I need to, to convince you that uh, the, the web has changed our lives, unless you, you lived in a cave for the last couple of years. Um, uh, access to information uh, happens on the web. Uh, we do business on the web, entertainment. Unfortunately, also social interaction now mostly happens over the web. Um, and based on the recent statistics, um, we spend at least one day per week online. Um, and well, this is actually not new. This is the case for the past five years. And also, uh, the past five years, mobile devices are the, the main uh, device that we use uh, to access the web. And when I'm talking about mobile devices, I'm not talking about mobile phones. I'm talking about mobile phones, smartphones, tablets, devices like that. Um, this is nice, okay, spending a whole uh, day per week uh, online, but as you can imagine, uh, while we are online, we are exposed to a number of threats, uh, such as malware, phishing, uh, malicious advertisements, uh, tracking, uh, watering, watering hole attacks, and uh, exploitation kits that are uh, created specifically for uh, browsers like Beef. Um, and the past few years, uh, I have been curious to see whether the, the protection that we are getting from the client, whether it can actually help us uh, defend against these threats. Um, and uh, this is a summary of the, my journey so far in web security. Um, in uh, 2013, we found that most of the security controls that you like and that you use in your desktop browser are totally absent from uh, your mobile phone browser, from your mobile browser. So if, if you are considering the, uh, technology like uh, safe browsing, um, which is the blacklist that we are using to uh, filter out phishing and malware, this, is, this was not there back then. Or DNT, do not track me. Uh, blocking third-party third party cookies, private browsing. These were not there, okay? And at that time, still, this device, Android, iOS, your tablet, your smartphone, was the device that we were using, you, you were using in order to access the web, and you were totally unprotected. Or you might be protected, but you would never be able to, um, to configure it properly. It could be... Um, uh, off by default, or it could be very confusing to find out how to enable it. Uh, in 2014, um, we figured out that gradually the browsers in, uh, uh, the mobile browsers started to use safe browsing, but still, by testing them against um, active malware and phishing, we saw that the, uh, the protection was ineffective uh, basically, we found many uh, instances where uh, the, the blacklist would not just sync. Um, and this was the case uh, two years ago. Um, 
And actually, this June, this is a, a discussion for maybe another uh, talk. And I'm also <coughs> building a solution for uh, blacklist. Going forward, um, private browsing. Uh, hopefully, you know that private browsing is not so private. Uh, uh, there are some web artifacts that we can recover, even if we don't have the, the technical skills of a digital forensic investigator. Um, this is actually confirmed by another team in the States from uh, Georgia, Georgia Tech, and they have also proposed a solution for that. It's called uh, Ucognito. Uh, please do not... Um, uh, it, it's different from Incognito, which is the private mode for uh, uh, Chrome. And coming to today, um, last year, uh, around this time, November, uh, we figured out that um, we are being tracked with some technologies that we thought that they were not used for tracking, even though the, they were available to us or to you as developers, because I'm not a developer, um, um, for at least 10 years with uh, HTML5. Uh, these technologies, uh, excuse me, uh, by the way, before, let me give you some context. We know that, hopefully we all know that web tracking is not new, okay? Um, this article is uh, at least seven years old, um, but we, we all know that we, we live in the post-Snowden era. We are actively being tracked. Uh, this is actually me opening the browser for five minutes on a new one, actually. It's a clean browser. Um, I tried to book uh, for me to stay today. Here I checked the news for my favorite uh, team and these were 152 sites that connected with me when I tried to actually connect to just three or four of them. Uh, this is a um, very nice um, add-on from my Mozilla, it's called Lightbeam. Um, and going back to tracking, uh, Okay, tracking is not new, and it's not, uh, by definition, malicious. So you can have tracking for legitimate purposes, like uh, presenting personalized content or for uh, site analytics, but this is not the case that we are going to discuss from now on. Okay, traditionally, uh, tracking uh, started with uh, cookies, and then we moved on to other technologies because of space reasons. We didn't have enough space to store data with cookies only four kilobytes. Also, the, the life expectancy of a cookie is uh, small uh, compared to flash cookies or other plugins that you can use to store data on the client. Um, but today you don't need to, to use, to, to install plugins uh, to store data in clients. Uh, you can use HTML5, a web storage, a web SQL, IndexedDB, um, and while these technologies seem obvious that they can be used for tracking, for a long time we thought that they were not. When we started this uh, work with Stefano, we could not find any technical report, any resource online, any paper saying web storage or web SQL is actively used by trackers today. So even though the specification said that it could be, so they should, these technologies should be used, should be treated like cookies. You should erase this data simultaneously, okay, in order to protect the privacy of us, of users. So we said, okay, let's try to figure out whether this is true or not. Let's figure out whether uh, these three technologies are being used by trackers. And this is exactly what we did. To do that, um, we needed a representative data, uh, <clears throat> data set um, of websites, and we used a HTTP ar archive for that. Uh, HTTP archive is crawling. It's a project that is uh, crawling uh, the top one million, roughly one. It's loosely based on uh, Alexa, uh, the top one million sites. Um, when we used it, we got around half a million websites, and 
uh, you can get all the content, the JavaScript, and the, well, the client side scripts uh, in general. And uh, in May 2018, we were able to collect roughly 16 million of JavaScript code, different sub-resources, okay? Obviously, because the amount of the data that we had to handle um, was big, okay, enormous, uh, we used uh, Google BigQuery, and then we did static analysis to see whether uh, the sub-resources that we have collected used the technologies in scope, one, and secondly, whether uh, these technologies were used for tracking. Uh, to figure out this uh, last information, we used uh, known domains used for tracking. Um, disconnect me, no track, and easy list, okay? Uh, probably if you are using an add-on, like Adblock Plus, you have seen them, or even better, if you are using uh, Firefox, uh, you might know that by now, Mozilla has decided to op uh, to, uh, to make the users opt out for anti-tracking. So now in the current version of Firefox, uh, anti-tracking is enabled by default. And I think you have the disconnect uh, tracking list uh, protecting you. Right, the results now. So we found out that uh, Three out, of, three out of four times, um, the uh, sub-resources that we collected would uh, include code from uh, web storage, using web storage, that um, was writing or reading uh, to your client. And most of the times, you can also see that this is uh, from a third-party sub-resource. So it was not from the actual website, let's say, that hosted the code. This, I'm assuming that this is not uh, very surprising to you, especially if you are a, a web developer. But what is very interesting is that we have actual proof that tracking is now the main case. Okay, so 70% of the times that we found web storage in our data set, uh, this code was used for tracking. And this was the case even for Web SQL, which uh, if you are a web developer, you would know that it's deprecated, it's not used anymore. This is also highlighted in our numbers that we found. But still, this technology was used half of the time for tracking. And if we start uh, thinking about ever cookies, um, this can, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this highlight the, the impact of our funding, findings. Right, we also find, found that uh, in most of the websites that we collected that, from, uh, that were in the data set, at least one uh, tracking sub-resource was found. This was the case for web storage, and the other two technologies were not so um, frequently used. So the next a question that we uh, wanted to, to answer was, okay, so these three technologies are being actively used for tracking. What is the, the client doing about that? Uh, you might remember that the specification said, okay, please treat these technologies like cookies and get rid of them, basically. Um, to see what the, the browsers were doing, uh, we examined the most popular browsers uh, for desktop and uh, mobile devices, uh, Windows and Mac for desktops, desktop and Android, iOS, and Windows Phone um, for the mobile browsers. Uh, to do that, um, Stefano created a web app that would test the compatibility of the browser uh, with these three technologies and would also uh, write and read uh, data on your client so we could check whether uh, we could write and then delete and then read again the same data. Um, this is available on GitHub. Uh, I highly encourage you to see whether your browser uh, erases this data from your client. 
from your device. Now, one of the results that we found, unfortunately, was that if you are clearing, if you are using the control that your browser has uh, to erase this data, clearing browsing data or something like that, according to the client that you are using, uh, this is not enough because one, data, all the data, all the three different technologies would not be erased in some cases, or you need an extra step uh, in order to clean to delete all of them. And we know that for naive uh, users, uh, meaning users that are not technically or security savvy, one, at, even one extra step uh, in the GUI is enough uh, to make them fail. Um, in this table, you can see um, a summary of the, the browsers and the issues that we found. So for instance, for Android and uh, Firefox version 60, uh, you can try to erase the data, but uh, IndexedDB, data from IndexedDB would stay, okay? The browser says, okay, they have been erased, but the tracker wins, basically. Um, instances where data deletion needs an extra step in the GUI, for example, in Windows 10, Firefox 56, uh, again, uh, you need to uh, add, uh, you know, to, to, um, to show a hidden menu before uh, you select IndexedDB so it can be erased. Now, private session. Uh, we know that private session is not so private. Uh, we, also find, we, we also found that um, data from these technologies would stay in your, client, in your device uh, when you close the uh, private session. And uh, in another case, we found that um, data from a private session would uh, be available to a non-private session. Uh, for the lighter case, uh, pro uh, the, the only browser that we found uh, that was this one, uh, and uh, I'm assuming that unless you are from Asia or you are frequently going to Asia and you, or you have friends in Asia, you would not have seen this uh, browser, but this is a very popular um, browser in Asia. Um, another example for uh, data that persists after closing the private session, uh, for instance, in Opera 46.3, essentially the, the data stay, nothing happens when you close the, uh, the private session. And um, also we also had uh, an instance uh, with um, uh, the guest mode of Chrome. Uh, now you might be thinking, okay, uh, you, Alex, you are talking about private uh, sessions. Guest mode is not exactly um, private mode, private session. But actually, if you are using uh, guest mode in Chrome, uh, the browser would say something, you can browse the web now on uh, guest mode, nothing will stay in your browser, uh, you cannot be tracked, okay? And this is also, again, not the case. Uh, Chrome 62 for macOS or Windows, all the data remain. Uh, the only way to uh, delete the data is to actually uh, close the whole window of the browser. Closing the uh, guest mode window will not kill the data. Right, so as we have um, discussed, we have a number of vulnerabilities that we found in the browsers and we notified the vendors. Uh, we are happy that most of the vulnerabil vulnerabilities have been patched or the vendors tried to patch them, okay? This is good, but at the same time, it's bad because we know that many users do not update their phones. For example, if you have an iOS device and we know that the vendors sometimes introduce updates that make old phones slow, you might decide, like myself actually, I have an old iPad that I'm not updating. Uh, I'm not getting the updates, so I'm vulnerable to tracking with these technologies. And we also have uh, devices, first of all, that cannot update. So your smart TV might not update. Your old device, which is a Samsung, 
might not update because the vendor will not give you the update. And also, uh, the second point is that we found instances that by patching the vulnerability, another vulnerability happened, or we found that different versions of the same browser would have the bug, fix it, have it again, having a different one. Uh, so it means that there is a problem in the process, as uh, the previous talk was saying. Um, yeah, so let's have a, a demo uh, with this. And I need water. And you can hear me drinking water, sorry for that. Right, so these are some uh, tests that I made yesterday. Uh, I highly encourage you to use uh, Storage Watcher and see whether your browser um, is uh, vulnerable or not. Um, let's start with Opera. So op if, if you remember, because I don't, Opera had an issue with um, the private mode. So if you close the private session, the private, the, the GUI, uh, the data will remain. And this was uh, Opera 46.3. Bear with me for a moment. This should work. And let me see first what is the, uh, the version is 48, I can remember. 48.2, so it's a newer version. Let's try first the uh, data deletion. So I'm now going to um, storage watcher. Uh, it's a very simple uh, GUI. You add uh, data from these uh, three primitives uh, for client-side uh, storage, uh, and then you can see whether you can read them, essentially. This is what I'm doing. Local storage, index DB, web SQL, the data are there. The data are just timestamps. Okay, I'm reading them. I just click if you didn't see it um, on the list of entries, all right? And then I'm going to the settings to erase the data. Scrolling down, clear browsing data, selecting everything. There is an advanced more options that I'm uh, enabling now. It says data have been erased. Thank you very much. And I'm going back now to Storage Watcher. And the data are still there. Only uh, if, I, if I saw only web storage was uh, deleted. So if I had an ever cookie uh, technique, uh, I could resurrect cookies with the other two primitives. You can delete web storage, but I will resurrect it later with, from IndexedDB, uh, or I can create a cookie or another technology. Uh, and this, uh, if you have noticed, this is not a vulnerability that we found in the previous version. This is a new vulnerability that has been introduced. We have checked the previous versions. They didn't have this problem with the uh, data deletion. They had a problem with the uh, private session. Um, if, we, if you have ever used a private, if you have ever tried to create a snapshot uh, when you are using a private session, you will see that it's blank. It's a privacy um, feature. And this is why I had to actually record my phone and you will see my fingers. Uh, and the, the screen resolution, the, the image quality is not as good as the previous um, one. So again, I'm doing the same things, um, checking that everything has been erased. And then I'm opening a new private session, going to storage watcher, adding the data. Closing the session. At some point, my secrets are safe. The data should have been deleted. 
Let's go back to the normal session, checking whether the data are leaked or not. They are not, we are happy for that. But when I go back to another private session, the data are there. IndexedDB and WebSQL. So the control didn't work. Now going back to Firefox. So Firefox, um, and the results that I had for Firefox are for version uh, 60, and we are talking about version 63, so a newer version. Same scenario, I'm going to storage watcher. Ah, well, I'm checking first the, the version, sorry. This is a notification that web SQL is not uh, supported by the browser. This is a, a decision by Mozilla. There is nothing there. Oh, fail to add. I haven't seen this. Okay, I have added the data. I was not careful when I was recording. Right, and now I'm going to the privacy settings. And then I'm making sure that everything will be deleted when I'm um, when I will exit the browser. Going back. And killing the process, right? So I'm expecting that when I go back to storage water, the data will not be there. This was the pop-up that is not supported. And as you saw, the data were there, right? Okay, now, um, this vulnerability that I saw earlier has been patched. But the problem is, um, there is a problem with the GUI. So if we go back to the settings, it says, I will delete them if you select quit. So basically, Unless, if you exit the browser as I did, as most people actually, this control doesn't work. Okay, the only way is to go back, go to the menu, and hit quit. Okay, which is paranoid. And when I go back to storage water, I can confirm that the data are not there anymore. List all didn't give me anything. So yes, the vulnerability was patched, but uh, it introduced another obstacle to the users. If, if I didn't double check, I wouldn't realize that this control was there, but I had to do an extra step that I think that for most users, this will not happen. Okay, um, I tried my best to, to give you the, um, all the information that we, we did. Actually, this is um, Stefano's work, so he's, uh, he actually knows the technical details better than I do. I'm not a web developer, and this is about web development, actually. Um, our work has been uh, published to um, IEEE Access, and uh, I'm sending the, the material with you. Uh, the, the paper is open access. If you want, we, you can also have the, the paper. Uh, all the details are there. Uh, we have all the different uh, tests that we made. Uh, you can also check that uh, the versions, if you have a previous, uh, if you have a device with an outdated version of your operating system, you can check there our results, or you can directly go to Storage Watcher uh, and do it uh, yourselves. Uh, so that's it from me. Uh, you can send me 
you can actually uh, contact us uh, via email, and I'm happy to take questions now. Thank you very much, Dr. Malas. Yeah, that's absolutely fascinating because we all are uh, sort of privacy conscious people, and we um, open new private tabs, we clear cookies, clear private data. It looks like. Um, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because and how many? How many? Uh, I wonder how many marketers know about dirty tricks of using Index DB and local storage. Well, um, uh, any questions about that? They should know because seventy percent of uh, the use of these technologies is for tracking. Is for tracking, especially for web storage, which is the technology for tracking. So they probably know it. We didn't know. Hopefully now we know. Hey, so kind of your advice then is the best thing to do is we all should just use kind of Tor browser or pay for a VPN to kind of hide where we are. It depends. Uh, a Tor browser will not uh, save you from this uh, stuff. Tor, it will uh, give you anonymity. This is uh, storing data on your browser, okay? So you can use the Tor white, the Tor browser, sorry, afterwards, just delete it and then reinstall it. Yes, okay, if you are using multiple browsers, yes. This, this is, is about solution. mobile phones, right? Do, do, yeah. uh, that's not an interesting question. Yeah, so what do you do? Do you need to completely uninstall Chrome from your device and then reinstall it? And Chrome is one thing, but obviously there are a lot of system browsers mm -hmm. and MIUI browser that I showed, which is the most popular browser in, yeah, in, Asia. Uh, in Asia, in China mm -hmm. in particular, right? So they're using a lot of MIUI. You can also try to virtualize, to have multiple uh, browsers and use it for specific uh, cases. Uh, two questions. Uh, did you get any money uh, from uh, browsers? Uh, no, I'm not doing this work for the money. That's good. And uh, second question: uh, Do you believe that these browsers, like Opera and Firefox, they have uh, more, they have uh, your motivation to t track users? The browsers. Uh, well, I, I cannot speak on behalf of the browsers, but uh, I know that they, their teams, because we are working with some of them, they are trying to do something about it, and. One uh, way <clears throat> forward is the, the anti-tracking that is you know, by default on for uh, Firefox. Thank you. Any more questions? Well, I have one for you, actually. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll come back to you. So uh, you know the DNT header, right? Yes. Do not track, which mm -hmm. is very popular, and obviously a lot of browsers started adding it. I think very recently there was an article saying that it doesn't actually do anything. So have you done in your research any correlation of DNT flag being switched on or off um, in the browser? Because I don't, or is it just these these mobile browsers don't even have it? Uh, now the the mobile browsers probably have it. Uh, to be honest, uh, the last time I checked for DNT was in 2013. But uh, I, to be honest, I was I, I stopped uh, caring about DNT because I know that the advertisers are ignoring it, and this is known uh, five years ago. Not uh, uh, this is not a recent thing. Uh, DND is being ignored. Uh. Thanks. That, that kind of leads me on to the next, my question anyway. So the IAB's um, version for mm -hmm. the app, do mm -hmm. you feel that it will help regulate the tracking of um, personal information? Uh, say that browsers? again? Do you feel that the IAB's um, app version mm -hmm. will help regulate um, personal information being tracked? Well, the, uh, there has been a new initiative with the GDPR trying to fix uh, stuff. But I, I mean, I, I'm not a proficient in the legal stuff. Uh, I cannot uh, give you a concrete answer. Uh, I, I think that with regards to tracking, uh, things are moving forward, okay? Uh, we know that the legal uh, guys are slower because their the understanding technology is not... Um, in the same level as we have as computer scientists. But I think that things are improving. Uh, and a lot of, for, for example, I know that uh, for Mozilla, it's a priority tracking uh, for the coming years. And they are doing a lot of work for that. Yeah, that's a question. Um, if we wanted to help you with the testing results mm -hmm. as, a, as a community to increase the sort of grid of combination of devices and... Please email me. Only that? Yes, please. <laughs> I, I have, I have, I, I need doers. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you, I'm also 
uh, this is something that we have discussed uh, with Sam last year. I'm also um, leading an open source uh, tool, uh, but my commitments in uh, the university doesn't allow me to do as much as I, I want. So this is another topic. So we have a tool which is a super blacklist, okay, for anti-tracking, anti-phishing, anti-malware, open source. Okay, if you are interested to work with us, please email me. Okay, uh, we have stuff uh, that we need doers, okay? Awesome, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and uh, as you know, we discussed with Dr. Milanos because uh, the good way of approaching this is actually to uh, start an OWASP project. Yes. And obviously, for the OWASP project to be successful, it needs contributors, right? So we're looking at, you know, it's able to contribute. Again, you don't have to be a developer to contribute. You can be a tester, you can mm -hmm. be a documentation exactly. writer, you can be a proofreader, um, you can be a marketer and promoter, but help the project in any way you can. Now, with the introduction of GDPR, now we are seeing that all sites are introducing their usage of cookies. But I don't know if they will, if GDPR also consider introducing this uh, local storage. I don't think that the uh, well. Again, I'm not the expert in the, the legal part, mm. but I would be surprised if they specifically say these three technologies, especially if uh, no, knowing that. We didn't know that they are being used uh, so much. Their specification, though, as I said earlier, says treat them like cookies, okay, and delete them. Yeah. And I think one of the interesting things, as Talal has mentioned in his question, I think every single website you visit these days gives you the EU GDPR yes. warning or mm -hmm. says, oh, this site is using cookies, and you have to click on this annoying button saying, okay, uh, it's okay to be tracked, please use cookies. but. No website to say, oh, we use some other techniques like IndexedDB or WebSQL to store information about you and track you. Of course, they don't, right? And of course, the scary thing about these things, you cannot even con control it anywhere yes. from the browser, right? There isn't a page of settings. It, um, you know, for cookies, you can go and say, show my cookies. You can see the list of cookies. And you know, a lot of organizations actually list the cookies that they, they use mm -hmm. and the purpose for which they're using the cookies. But you know, using the local storage index DB and the web mm -hmm. techniques, no one's listing those. And of course, the scary thing is um, a lot of, let's say, bad marketers who actually fingerprint the browser using other characteristics of the browser. For example, um, the platform, the screen resolution, the color depth, there are many other techniques how it's possible to fingerprint you particularly as a user, right? Browsing a particular website, the, uh, the, the and, but web, they they're not deterministic. People. They're not deterministic. Right? This is hundred percent deterministic because uh, any web page can write to a local storage on your disk, on your computer, on your browser without your knowledge. You have no idea what's it writing, and it can read it back every time you visit this website, right? And it's it's not a cookie. You have no way of seeing or controlling it. It was created for developers, right? Yeah. For the convenience of developers and. Yes, somehow the whole privacy element got mm -hmm. lost. <coughs> Any more questions? No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh